Folks, hello there. Very good afternoon. Um, delighted to be with you uh, this afternoon. This is uh, this is something that we have uh, we're doing slightly differently this month. Uh, we're going for uh, for a lunchtime uh, lunchtime slot in GMT time zone. Um, thanks a million for joining and good afternoon. As I said, or maybe it's good morning or good evening, depending on on where you're listening in from or or whether you're uh, listening to a playback. Uh, delighted to have you with us today, folks. Um, my name's Rob McGee. I'm the CEO at Ingenio, and uh, we've built uh, and I founded two companies, two organizations that help uh, SaaS and technology uh, organizations, and specifically in terms of today, uh, candidates and, and people. Um, delighted to be talking to you about uh, this week about um, uh, a, a really high value, really high impact topic uh, that we're running over the course of, uh, of this month. Um, and that is, is really helping people from a coaching perspective in an interview. So, so look, whether you've got an interview upcoming over the coming, uh, over the coming days or coming weeks, or whether you're preparing to get yourself ready for interview this session, uh, uh, and the sessions that we're going to be running over the next couple of weeks, these sessions are specifically built for you. And um, clearly, we're talking to you with with great confidence um, and great context uh, as guys who recruit for some of the most amazing um, SaaS software and technology organizations. Uh, and clearly, we have a long track record of helping people. Um, of all levels and stages and backgrounds in their careers, whether they're just starting off from university graduates all the way through to very senior leaders in the tech and industry, uh, uh, software and in this, uh, software and tech industry. So let's get into uh, let's get into the the, the meat of today. Um, really, really importantly. Um, we have done loads and loads of research with clients. We've done tons of research with candidates. And um, we basically built and designed uh, uh, like the, the perfect um, interview setup structure of which there are four sections. And um, in our course in um, how to get hired, um, we obviously we talk about this particular piece in a lot more detail right but we're going to kind of skim over this today but to to uh, to help you prepare for an upcoming interview you've got to know and prepare against four key sections that are going to happen in that interview <clears throat> and it's definitely it's not our belief it is is it's, it's an absolute fact that you can to a degree you can control how an interview goes based on the preparation that you go and do and based around the kind of structure and the questioning uh, and the context that you basically flow in. Uh, despite the fact that it is the employer's interview and it, despite the fact that they've probably written the agenda and the context for that. So the four sections, so the very first piece, right? And whether this is remote and thankfully we're now getting starting to see a pretty significant number of face-to-face -face interviews happening both back both in, in the UK and also in Ireland, which is which is fantastic. So we really want to try and get people kind of thinking about how that's how that's going to materialize uh, again, as opposed to doing everything remotely uh, via Zoom. So the first section is is the introduction and, and the client overview. And what I'm saying to you there is I don't want you to do anything in that section in that very first minute, three minutes, five minutes. I don't want you to do anything other than sit back, listen, watch, and potentially take notes, okay? Let the interviewer open up by telling, uh, by telling themselves a little bit about themselves, a little bit about their role, a little bit about their company, a little bit about their team, and, and hopefully a little bit about uh, the role that they are looking to interview and uh, interview you for and ultimately hire for. And look, if they don't do that, if they don't do that, it's it's really uh, it's really really important that you try and get them to go and do that. And the reason that that section is so important is effectively when you get a, a client talking about you know themselves, the role, the team, the opportunity, the business, 
what you're going to get them to do is actually talk about this opportunity in their own language. They're going to use words and phrases that will really help. Uh, it'll help you identify exactly what it is that these guys are looking for. And I guess the real sweet spot there, the, the secret sauce, is trying to grab some of those words and phrases from that overview section and being able to replay that back to them over the course of the interview. That's where things really start to resonate from an interviewer's, uh, an interviewer's perspective. The second section is the you story. And um, it's, it's amazing. You know, we were doing some work with some, some, some very senior candidates uh, over the last couple of weeks, coaching them for some very senior appointments that they were, that they were, uh, that they're going to be attending. And it is incredible how many people start telling their story way back at university and, and look, maybe you've just finished university, right? But it's incredible as to how far back some people go in the story when actually what people want to hear is what's going on with you right now. So, so I guess the first thing is, is, you need to practice your you story. You need to have it videoed. You need to have it recorded. You need to, um, you need to be really, really slick. And that needs to be three to five minutes long. Absolutely, absolutely no more than that. Um, and that story basically talks about, you know, where you are right now, what you're doing right now, what, you know, I guess a little bit of education on maybe the organization that you're working in, what they do, the function that you're uh, you're working in, or the team that you're working in, what your deliverables are. Perhaps then you can step back if you've got work experience. You can step back two or three roles. If you don't have work experience, you can talk about maybe what you did in university or college or school. And then, really, what we like people then to finish off about is to is to uh, is to show off and tell something personal um, around you, so that. You've got some really interesting kind of context to be able to go into the section three with. Okay, and um, the you story is basically it's your it's it's a narrative of your CV with some with some personalization dropped in there, and that's what that piece looks like. Um, one hundred percent, you need to record yourself doing that. You need to see what you look like. You need to you need to obviously deliver that with real context and conviction, and that's very very important. Okay. Section three of the interview is, is what we call two-way Q&A. So perhaps you're preparing yourself for loads of competency-based questions or role-based questions or scenario-based questions. And that's absolutely the right way. And, and again, we, we do a whole module on, on the types of questions that you can expect to go and get from a generic perspective in an interview. We've done a whole uh, module on that in our course. Um, but, but for me, um, probably one of the areas that we, that we see people almost pass or fail on is their, either their ability or their inability to ask absolutely brilliant questions in an interview. You've got one opportunity. And those questions um, really show off what is probably one of the single most important attributes that interviewers are looking for these days in the current climate, and that is curiosity. So that is a that is a characteristic, a trait that most of our SaaS software and technology clients are looking for. And curiosity can only be given off by your ability to ask questions and wonder why and, and kind of dig in thing, dig into things a little bit more. And you can only do that in an interview. So Here's, here's the message here. If you don't ask any questions in an interview, if you don't ask any questions in an interview, how are you going to be able to score yourself against that curiosity metric that so many organizations are looking for right now, regardless of the role that you go and do, right? That could be, you could be an engineer, you could be a developer, you could be a business analyst, you could be in marketing, you could be sales enablement, whatever the role is, that attribute Amongst loads of others, by the way, that attribute is absolutely crucial right now and very, very high on people's criteria tick lists. Um, the other thing, and again, I won't go into huge detail on it now, but because we do cover this in the course, is my demand of you that when you do ask questions, that they are two things, that they are positive 
and that they are curious and inquisitive. Okay, so it's really, really important that you you practice that. And happy to go and take some questions on that one. And um, you know, uh, when we get to Q and A at the end. And then the last section of an interview. So again, just just to kind of close off, it's really important that you are you have some form of control and some form of understanding as to what's going to happen next. Are you are you a pass? Are you a fail? Are you progressing? What is the interview process that you're involved in? How competitive it is? What are the timelines around you know time to hire, next steps interviews? Who would be involved? You know what would the audience be? What would the agenda be? If there's a test, uh, what does that test look like? Who's going to be sending it? Uh, is there a response time for that test? If there's a presentation or an exercise, who would be involved? What's the audience, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and look, there's probably one brilliant, uh, there's probably one brilliant kind of finisher uh, as a kind of a, as a question that is non-aggressive that I really want to try and and get you to think about asking. And this is definitely something that we coach all of our candidates to go and do when they're running through processes with us is is ask the interviewer am i the type of individual that you can see working in your team okay am i the type of individual uh, that fits with the culture of your business do i have the appropriate skills that you need this project management role to do as an example so so look uh, I'm saying that very naturally because we're coaching people to go and do that all the time. And um, so, so, so that's the first thing I would say to you is you have to be comfortable in terms of saying that you can't trip up. The, you, you can't trip up uh, saying, uh, asking that question, right? So you need to say it with kind of conviction and confidence. So you need to practice it. Um, and that's really, really important for you to go and do. So th those four sections, they are the must knows for your interview. OK, um, if I go back and we think about that second piece, um, which is your story. OK, and, and I think maybe fattening that out uh, or filling it out a little bit. How do you go and pitch yourself? So I guess, look, what I'm trying to give you here is, is probably four areas that, that you should probably try and get nailed. OK, so the first thing is what's not in your CV? OK, and that could be things like maybe working with a very large named customer on a particular sale or project or assignment or whatever the case may be. So so that you've got some real context in there. It could be about, you know, maybe um, some of the key deliverables or outcomes or outputs that you were responsible for doing in the job, maybe as part of a team, maybe as an individual contributor, whatever the case may be. So it's really, really important that you that you kind of call that stuff out and um, both from a work perspective but also from a personal perspective okay so that's really really important uh, you've got to come up with some something or some stuff to say that is really interesting that perhaps the interviewer doesn't know about you because it's not your cv and they say oh rob that's really interesting i didn't know that can we get in and talk in a little bit more detail about that so that's the first thing the second thing is um, it's 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 amazing. It's amazing um, when we get feedback from clients, uh, how many people, how many uh, how many interviewers kind of come back and say, I didn't really get I didn't get the feeling that this girl wanted really wanted the job or, you know, there was no real conviction there that this guy really wanted to come and work for us. So so look maybe maybe that's the case maybe someone is going through the motions from an interview perspective or perhaps they've organized and prepared so rigidly that they've they, that they've become very very kind of uptight and stressed and actually have been unable to articulate why it is that they want this particular job in this particular team working for this particular hiring manager in that particular company but it's really really important that you're able to be specific about what is unique and magic about this particular role that you're going for, as opposed to saying, do you know what, I just want any sales development uh, or business development rep job. 
and I just want to get start my career off. You need to be specific. And what that does is it allows you to show off the fact that you've done some very specific, unique research on the company, the industry, the product, the tool, the platform, the team, the individuals, the culture, the personas, whatever the case may be. So, so that's really, really important. Um, soft skills and, and, and examples of, again, I think are really important and interesting. You've, you've heard me talk about uh, curiosity there, right? Um, so how would you demonstrate that? Well, well, clearly it's around, it's around kind of questioning and listening and then asking more questions and then perhaps being a little considerate in terms of how you would kind of get to, you know, maybe an outcome or an opinion or whatever the case may be. Things like um, being, you know, if you're if you're touching a customer in any way, shape, or form, empathy. So so you know, how do you how do you typically engage with people, and how can you show examples that you are someone who who has an empathetic kind of approach, you know, in terms of in terms of you know how you how you kind of engage with people and communicate with people react and handle and respond to them and um, how do you deal with problems uh, how do you manage things like you know we spoke about it about uh, four weeks ago in one of our webinars like how do you deal with problems and um, so it's 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 that type of stuff so so the ability to be able to you know deconstruct some of those soft skills and then have real tangible examples of how you go and apply yourself to that, I think are really important. Um, and I think, you know, to help you prepare for that, probably the job description is the first place I would go to, to be able to understand, well, actually, what soft skills are these guys calling out as mandatory requirements for the job that I'm interviewing for? Uh, so I hope that uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, and, and look, the last bit for me, you know, I feel like I say this maybe after every section, but like, I, I think the last piece for me is, is, is it's incredible how few people really tune into this, whether they're, you know, zero experience or, or indeed whether they've got loads of experience and capitalist uh, organizations, businesses and enterprises, right, of which, <laughs> every SaaS software and technology organization is absolutely one, right? Where they're, they're not altruistic, they're, 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 not, they're, they're in business to make profit for the shareholders or their investors or their owners or whatever the case may be. And every business has a set of, of corporate objectives and that could be to do things like increase revenue or reduce, <clears throat> reduce cost or OPEX, reduce headcount or increase headcount, improve customer experience, and so on and so forth. And whatever job it is that you go and do in a business, whether you're on the software development or engineering team, or whether you're client focused maybe in sales or marketing, ultimately your team and your function and your boss or your boss's boss will have a mandate to deliver X, Y, and Z as a business imperative. And ultimately, your role will in some way, shape or form roll up to that. And what I want to try and get you to really do is really talk about what you did that rolled up to the performance of the software development as an example uh, team as part of the overall uh, business function. And being able to commercialize yourself, regardless of whether you're commercial or not, but being able to commercialize and connect yourself with outcomes and outputs and deliverables, be that revenue or otherwise, is so unbelievably important. So, you know, if there's one thing that you take away from today, the, the ability to be able to position yourself accordingly to that is just that will blow you away and blow your blow your competition um, like a million miles away. So, so, so really, really tune into that. I've said there right at the very end, really want to try and get you to tune into keeping things concise. And I think that's very important, right? Um, you know, enough information to, to, that, that warrants maybe a further question from their side around, okay, well, look, interesting, tell me more. But clearly what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to be too brief. You clearly need to answer the question. You need to give context and substance. But, but rather than it being a kind of a, um, you know, a diatribe of, 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 of boring, non-relevant stuff, 
make sure you keep it really concise. We'll just take a quick drink. So that basically helps you from a structure perspective, that helps you really prepare very well for, for an interview. Let's go into questions. Uh, and I can see a number already tuned in. So, and by the way, if you've got any questions on anything I've just said there, or indeed anything in terms of your, your current situation or position right now, or anything on the course, give them to me and I'll, I'll, we'll answer them live now. Um, I've spoken loads about our course, right? So look, there's a stat that we're hugely proud of. 90% of our students get hired within 90 days after taking our course and they get hired. So, so these types of people who are all backgrounds, uh, all ages of experience, some new to tech, some in tech a long while. And um, we've helped these guys and girls get hired by these types of organizations. So if that's what you're looking for, that's what this course is all about. Really, really importantly. Uh, special price promo for anyone who's live on the webinar today. The course normally retails at 100 euros. It's now 60% off and that expires this Friday. Uh, so you'll be getting some information and some details around how to purchase that uh, after, right after the webinar. Um, we have just launched a, a CV review service and um, that basically helps people who are maybe a little unsure if they've got the CV nailed. Does it look right? Is the context right? Is the wording right? Does it visually look OK? Is it going to get through an ATS? Really, really importantly, uh, from a bot and scraping and job application perspective. Um, and if you want some information on that, just type CV into the chat box uh, and Lisa and Jack will get back to you shortly on that. <clears throat> And, um, and lastly, if you've got an interview coming up and the type of stuff that I'm talking to you about right now is meaningful or relevant or in interesting, whatever the case may be, you can go and do a, a couple of coaching sessions live with me. And again, um, just type one-to-one -one into the chat box and the guys will get back to you with some information and some details. <clears throat>